Don't push too hard, Joseph. And it's finished. Wow, that's wonderful, Joseph. Matthew, Matthew, where are you? I'm here. Hey, what are you doing? Can't you see? I'm playing with Joseph. Who? Oh, I made a new friend while you were playing a stupid game. His name is Joseph. And only I can see him. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, you think so? Then you can go away. I'm having so much fun playing with Joseph. Oh, come on, Matthew. Come on, Joseph. Let's go somewhere else. You're sorry. Now come on. What's going on here? Father John! Good morning, Father. Father, Matthew's angry at us for not playing with him. And now he has made up an imaginary friend and he is refusing to play with us. Oh, an imaginary friend? Is this true, Matthew? Uh, I... I... What's the name of your friend? His name is Joseph. Wow! You know in Bible there's a story about a Joseph, a man who could interpret his dreams. Really? And his name was Joseph? Yes, his name was Joseph, the son of Jacob. Was he the son of Jacob who was known as Israel? Right, Lucy. I can see that you haven't forgotten the story I told you the other day. Father, was Joseph really able to read his dream? Yes, children. Do you want to hear his story? Yes, Father. All right, sit down then. Joseph was the first child born to Jacob and his favorite wife, Rachel. With the birth of Benjamin, her second child, Rachel died. Jacob loved Joseph the most, which made his brothers jealous. Uh, this is heavy. Oof, it's so hot today, and it's not even noon yet. Hmm, yes, it's getting hotter every day, and all our crops are dying. Don't stand there and talk. We have to finish this by evening. Yeah, we can, if our father's pet will help us. Hello everyone. Why are you here? Nothing. Father asked me to check on the progress, so I came here. Father's little bet has come to check on our work. Ha <laughs> ha. What? Why are you angry with me? Leave. Leave me. Ugh. Father is expecting you to have this field harvested by sunset. We can finish this field by noon, if you can help us. I can't do that. I have to go to other fields to inspect. He is younger than all of us. Why should we take orders from him? And it's done. Is that for me, father? No, son. It's for your brother. It's a gift for him, as it is his birthday today. Father? Will I get a same one when I get older? Haha, <laughs> of course dear. I'll get you one when you're 17 years old. I don't know what their problems. <sighs> wow, this is amazing. Do you like it son? It's, it's wonderful. Joseph, this is a gift for your 17th birthday. Oh, thank you so much father. What is that? What? Hmm. 
Look at Joseph's coat, you fool. Wow. Our father must have given this to him. And we are here to work like slaves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I had a strange dream last night. Oh, shut up. We are not interested in your dreams. Stop it. Joseph, tell us about your dreams. I dreamt that we were each tying up our sheaf of wheat. And when we had finished, your sheaves of wheat bowed down to me. Did you mean that we bowed down to you? So, you want to rule over us? Is that so? I... I don't know. What did you mean? None of us will ever let you be our king. All right, all right. Just forget it. I'll tell you about another dream. What? You rode a flying camel? <laughs> <laughs> or were you flying yourself in the skies? <laughs> Maybe one of us will kick you so strong that you will end up flying. Ha 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 ha. Perhaps, perhaps I shouldn't bother. Come on, Joseph. Okay, I dreamt I had climbed a mountain. I looked up and saw the sun, the moon and the stars. And they all bowed down to me. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but father, why are you entertaining Joseph's fantasies? You must have patience, son. If it is the will of God, then we'll all bow down to Joseph. Ha! I had enough. It's because you always favor him that he has such grand delusions. Judah, come back. Joseph, go to Shechem and see how your brothers are doing. Yes, father. It's a long journey, so it would be better if we can leave by tomorrow itself. Sure, Father. I will leave tomorrow at dawn. Good. You should be back in 12 days, God willing. Don't worry, Father. No harm will come to me. Following his father's instruction, Joseph left for Shechem. He traveled for many days and finally reached where his brothers were working. Oh, look who's coming. The dreamer? Perhaps we should all bow down to him. Our father's spy. I'd like to break his bones. Ha! Huh. I say we kill him today and get rid of him forever. Brothers, listen. We could throw him in that empty well over there. No one will ever know. No. But we cannot kill our brother. We are not gonna kill him. Shut up. He's coming. Oh, leave me. Made in Egypt, is it? Just for father's pet. Ha! Huh. Leave me. What are you doing? You think you can rule over us forever? Hold him, guys. Leave me. Ugh, leave me. Come on, guys. Stop. He's our brother. Stop. Stop. No. Ugh, stand aside, you. Leave me, please. Let us know if you have a dream. Ha ha ha. Now, throw him. <laughs> oh. So, it is done. Brothers, help me! Hey, look! There are some merchants coming here! Somebody, help! Please! I think they have heard Joseph shouting. Why don't we sell our brother to these merchants? This way, we won't be accused of killing the dreamer. And we will get few pennies too. That's a good idea. Come on, throw him a rope. And let's pull him out of the well. 
The brothers sold Joseph to the Midianite merchants for 20 pieces of silver. And the merchants took Joseph to Egypt as a slave. Brothers, please don't let them take me. Ah, uh, stop crying and start walking. I'll break your leg if you try to escape. Ah, ah. But how could you? Selling our own brother. It's unheard of. Nah, this is better. Remember that we were about to kill him. He's still alive, no? What are you going to say to father? Hey, look. I took Joseph's coat and I drenched it with goat's blood. Ah, that's great. Now we can make up some story on the way. Come on. Uh, at least he's alive now. God, please help him. Joseph's brothers dipped his coat in the blood of a goat and took it to their father. No! No, no! I think... I think the wild animals attacked him. What have I done? Oh, my son. My son, apple of my eye. Months later, the Midianites reached Egypt and they took him to the slave market for selling him. Fifty pieces of silver. Hundred pieces of silver. One thirty. Three hundred pieces of silver. What? Who is that? Who said three hundred? Come to the Fred, please. It's me. 300. Anyone wants to race on that? 300 once, 300 twice, and 300 final. Sold to Potiphar, the commander of the royal guards. Don't worry, you'll be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? And how did you end up here? It's Joseph, master. Joseph told his story to Potiphar, the commander of the royal guards. Potiphar was kind to Joseph. Joseph was assigned to work in the field at first. Joseph worked hard and this pleased Potiphar and Joseph was quickly promoted to various positions. Years passed. God blessed Joseph and he succeeded in every assignment he did. Potiphar was very happy with Joseph. Joseph, we had a fantastic crop this year. Our neighbors got nothing, but your work helped us to double ours. Thank you, Master. It's all a blessing from God. I'm pleased with your work, Joseph. From now on, you are going to be in charge of my household. As you wish, Master. Keep up the good work, Joseph. You may leave now. Thank you, Master. He's so handsome. Wish he would at least look at me. Hmm. Ever since Joseph came to the city, Potiphar's wife had been secretly admiring Joseph. And one day, when Potiphar had gone out of the city, she decided to call Joseph into her chamber. S Joseph? Here, Joseph, look here. Hello, madam. Hush, Joseph, I need to talk to you. What is it? What happened? Shh, come inside my chamber. Mm, can't we talk here? Come on, don't be shy. All right. Come in, Joseph. I... I... What's the matter? Joseph, I am tired of this life. My husband is a great man, but he's never home. He never has time for me. I... You must understand that my master is busy with many things. He's an important man. Stop! No, stop it! I'm going! Joseph, come here! Stupid! 
I will make you pay for this. Potiphar's wife decided to take revenge on Joseph, and she lied to Potiphar when he returned. <laughs> That stupid Hebrew slave. <laughs> Joseph? Yes, Joseph. He he came into my chamber the other day. He did what? Yes. When I was alone, he came into my chamber and I ran out screaming. Look at this. It's Joseph's tunic. How dare you, Joseph? Potiphar put Joseph in prison where king's prisoners were kept. Why God? Why is this happening to me? Don't worry Joseph. You could have done nothing. She's a bad woman. What can we do? She's the wife of the commander. You are very kind sir. God will protect the innocent. After many years the pharaoh of Egypt called upon a meeting with his chiefs. The pharaoh was having troubling dreams and he was looking for someone to interpret the meaning. But no one was able to offer any help. Is there nobody, nobody in the whole of Egypt who can interpret, who can interpret my dream? My lord, may I? Who are you? My lord, my name is Jayla. I'm your chief warden. What do you have to say? My lord, there is a Hebrew prisoner in my ward who can interpret people's dream. When I was in prison, he interpreted my dreams and it happened just the way he explained. Hmm, bring him here. Maybe the prisoners are better than my ministers hanging around. So, you are the one my chief warden recommended? What's your name? My name is Joseph, my lord. My warden says you interpreted many of his dreams. Can you do that for mine too? My lord, it is God who sends dreams and he is the one who reveals the meaning. May I hear about your dreams? I'll try my best to interpret it. All right. I had two dreams and in the first one, I saw that there were seven healthy cows grazing by the river. But all of a sudden, seven lean and ugly cows came out of the water and they swallowed all the healthy ones. What do you think? Can you tell them what that meant? Hmm. Can you tell me about your other dream? Hmm. I dreamt that seven heads of grain Healthy and sleek were going on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the wind. The seven thin heads of the grain swallowed the healthy ones. Both dreams mean the same thing. God has revealed to you what He is going to do. The seven fat cows and the seven heads of grain mean that seven years of great riches will be coming to Egypt. But this will be followed by seven years of famine and many will die. Hmm, what do you think I should do? I think you should save the grain from the years of plenty and you can use them later during the famine. You should appoint someone who can do this work. Thank you, Joseph. But I don't think I can find another man like you who's so filled with the spirit of the God. You shall be chancellor and all my people shall respect your orders. Thank you. Thank you, your majesty. Here, take this ring. From now on, in all of Egypt, only I will be greater than you. You are generous, my lord. Thank you so much. Like Joseph foretold, after seven years of abundance, there was no rain after the seventh year. There were no crops and the animals died of starvation. But Joseph had collected one-fifth of land's crop and he was saving it for the famine. 
People from different lands arrived at Joseph's doorstep to buy the grains from him. One day, when the drought became severe in Canaan, Jacob sent his sons to buy some grain. His brothers also arrived at the doorstep, not knowing who Joseph really was. Do you think he will give us the grains, dear? Hmm, I think so. People say that he's a kind man. I hope our father is right in sending us here. Yes, I hope he will sell us some grain. Shh! Keep quiet. He's here. Bow the knee before Joseph, the Chancellor of Egypt. Why are my brothers here? I must teach them a lesson. Give the grains to everyone except those few. Make them stay back. I have to ask them a few questions. Who are you? Are you spies? No, my lord. We, we are poor Hebrews. Twelve sons of the same father. We, we... There are only ten of you here. I know that you are lying. My lord, one of us is no more and the youngest one is with our father. And the youngest one is with our father. It's true. We are not spies, my lord. Stop lying, you spies. Commander, put them in prison. Now! Have mercy. Please, my lord. No, please don't. My lord, please, please let us go. Our father, our brother, they'll die if we don't return. Please let us go. We are just too poor. We are just poor Hebrews, not any spies. All right. Now stop crying. I'll let all except one to leave from you. You can take the grains too with you to Canaan. Bring your youngest one here. And I know you're honest people. Only then will I let the last one go. Only Simon remained in the jail and all other were let to go. When the brothers returned, they brought Benjamin along with them as Joseph had asked. Joseph was overjoyed seeing Benjamin, but he didn't want to reveal himself. He invited them to his dinner table and gave them a lavish treat. But when the dinner was about to get over, Joseph asked his chamberlain to take his silver cup and to hide it in Benjamin's sack. <laughs> Ooh, I thought I was going to die in there. It's a miracle that he let us go. Brother, look, the soldiers are following us. Huh? Show us your bags. Sir, sir, we were just uh, let go by your master. It's he who asked us to search you. His silver cup was stolen this evening. But, but we don't know anything about that. It's here, sir. I've found it. You don't know anything, huh? You are going to be hung for this. My lord, I brought the thieves. No, my lord. I didn't steal anything. Please, don't kill us, my lord. Please let us. There is no one to take care of our father. I didn't do anything. Please let us go. Please, please. Benjamin, my little brother, don't you still recognize me? You, you, you are jo Joseph. It's you. Yes, my little brother, it's me. Joseph? Our brother? But it's really you. We are really sorry, brother. Don't feel sorry for yourself. It was God who sent me here to save many lives. Joseph was finally reunited with his family. Their father, Jacob, was brought into Egypt and he was delighted to see his favorite son. Father, did Joseph have any children? Yes, they were named Manasseh and Ephraim. Wow, that was really good. 
<laughs> I'm glad that you like the story. Father, aren't you going to ask us any questions today? No, my child. It's already late and I should leave now. Bye. That story father told us yesterday was amazing. Didn't you think so? Which one? The story of Elijah the prophet? Yeah. Hey, by the way, is it father going to tell us the story of another prophet today? Hmm. Yes. He told us he'll tell us the story of prophet Amos today. Yes, Amos. I hope the story is going to be another great one. Hmm. Come on, let's go to our class. It's story time. Yay! Come on, Matthew. The class is about to start. I'm coming. Good evening, kids. So, are you all ready for today's story? Yes, father. <laughs> all right. So, like I told you yesterday, I'm going to tell you the story of Amos today. During the rule of Jeroboam II, Israel reached the peak of its glory. However, the prosperity was enjoyed only by the rich. The lives of vast majority of the poor were in misery. Heavy taxes and unfair interest on loans forced the poor to slavery. They were auctioned like animals in the slave market. The courts failed to execute justice, and not even the religious system was helpful to the poor. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing indeed shall I want. Though I pass through the valley of death. Huh? Ah. Uh, huh? Ah! Ah! Uh, 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 uh. <sighs> it's dead. The Lord is with me, I fear no harm. The Lord is with me, I fear no harm. Ooh, it's so hot today. Amos! Amos! Huh? Who's that? Amos, it's me, Eliphaz. Eliphaz, my friend. Hi, Amos. Eliphaz, good to see you. I heard you're doing well with your business. Hmm, I'm doing all right. Where are you coming from? We are coming from India. We bought some ivory and precious stones from India. Ivory? May I see that? I'm sorry. We sold all of them at Samaria. We stopped there on our way back and sold everything. Those people in Samaria bought everything we had at the price we named. <laughs> hmm. They must be very rich in Samaria. Certainly they are. Those Sumerians, they don't know what to do with their wealth. And the women? Oh, their women are loaded with gold. Wow, they must be really rich. What? Who are they? Why are they tied in chains? Who? Oh, oh them. They are the slaves we bought from Samaria. Slaves? Yes, we bought them for a very cheap price from Samaria. And we are going to sell them in Egypt. We will get a good price for them. <laughs> Slaves? 
but how could they? God gave freedom to everyone. You, what's your name? Huh? Me? Yes, you. Tell me your name. I, my name is Zera. Huh. And she's my wife, Miriam. Zira, how did you and your wife end up like this? Tell me, what happened? We, we are farmers from Jezreel. We are doing fine until last year when the crops failed. So? We couldn't pay the taxes, so borrowed some money from the landlord. But the next year, when we went to return the money, the landlord cheated us by saying that we had to pay double the amount in interest alone. Huh? How can the rich cheat poor farmers like that? That's not it, sir. They cheated people with the weights and measures also. What? Yes, sir. We had to give everything we had, but even that wasn't enough. They? They took our lands too. And then they took us to the slave market and, and we were sold to them. We? We don't know what happened to our children. They? We don't know where they are. But, but how could someone do that to you? It's not just us, sir. Everybody here will have similar stories to tell you. I'm so sorry to hear that. Wait here. I will go and talk to your master. Amos, what are you doing there? I was talking to them. Talking to the slaves, huh? Eliphaz, listen my friend. Is it necessary that you sell them only in Egypt? We will sell them to anybody who can pay. Look, I have some gold and silver. And I also have these sheep and cattle. Can you take those and sell those people? Huh? So you are now interested in slave trading, huh? Slaves? They are my brothers. All right, calm down. I'll sell them to you. Two slaves for a cattle and one slave for a sheep. Is it a deal? It's a deal. I'll buy all of them. Here you are. Here, take these chains. No, I don't want the chains. I only want the people. Huh? But we won't be responsible if they run off. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Master, we don't know who you are, but we will always be grateful to you. What do you want us to do, Master? No, don't call me that. I'm not your master. I'm an Israelite just like you. I am your brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stand up. Listen everybody, you are no longer a slave to everybody. You are free to go anywhere. I will give you my land for yours to work. You can take that for free. <laughs> <laughs> you are truly a great man. Amos freed the slaves he bought and he gave them his land. That night, how, how could they sell their own brothers as slaves? Amos. Huh? Who was that? Amos. God? It's you? Amos, what do you see? A plumb line? I have measured my people, Israel, with a plumb line. Huh? They are not upright, so I'm going to knock them down. What shall I do? Go to Israel. I will instruct you there. The voice of God reached Amos like a roaring lion. Amos left for Israel the next day as God had instructed, but the sights that he saw on his way made him really angry.
Help! Help! Shut up! Shut up, you poor little! <sighs> Stop! Stop it! What are you doing to him? Huh? Who are you? Mind your own business. He didn't pay his debts. So we are taking him as a slave. Lord, please help me! Amos could do nothing to help, so he walked away sadly. But he saw many other similar situations on his way to Israel. Stop it! Stop beating him! Oh! No! Please! No! Then why don't you pay his debts? Huh? You give me the money he owes me and I let him go. Do you have the money? I... I don't have the money. Then go away, you fool. Don't waste my time. What is happening here? Hmm. Pour more. This is only 20 liters. Huh? Uh, but how could that be? I had brought 40 liters. Stop lying and bring me more oil. I... I think there's been a mistake. This scale is wrong. You are cheating me. How dare you? Take this. Ah! Is this the way you collect your debts? Who are you? Get out of here. Do you have different scales for measure? No. We use only one measure. Huh. Huh? Then what are these? Cheating with the scales? There are soldiers here too. No, you won't escape from the Lord with the help of your army. Huh? Go in peace, my friend. The God of Israel is with you. Excuse me, where are you all going? Oh, you didn't know? They have built a large temple in Bethel. And I've heard that the idol there, the golden calf, is really beautiful. Then why those animals? Oh, these are the sacrifices for the god. Can you please tell me how many slaves you have? I have around 150 of them. And I have around 200 slaves. You crush the poor. Take their belongings, and now you're offering sacrifice to please God? What? No, look! Offering to God what is snatched from the poor is like killing a son before his father. Excuse me, I have been listening to your discussion. So, are you saying that we shouldn't offer sacrifices to the Lord? Your hands are stained with human blood. God will not be pleased with your sacrifices. How dare you? What are we supposed to do then? You must do justice. You must put an end to slavery. The poor have every right to live freely. You must let them go. In the end, God will judge you for what you do. What he says is the truth. Yes, he must be a prophet. How dare he talk about us like that? Yes, we must inform the chief priest about him. Some people realized that Amos was speaking the truth and they knew that he was a prophet, but some were not quite happy with what he was saying. One day, Amos went to the slave market in Samaria. Here is youth of 20. The bidding starts at 50 shekels. 55 shekels! 60 shekels. Sold for 60 shekels. Here, two healthy boys. Bidding starts at 10 shekels for both. 15 shekels. 20. Stop it. Huh? Who's that? How dare you enslave the people who God had liberated. What? How dare you? Stop the slave trade. Stop. Stop this lunatic! Soldiers! Soldiers, stop them! But before they could do anything, the slaves had escaped. They returned to their homeland. That afternoon, one man who escaped from the slave market reached his village. Paris, it's you! Ha ha ha! Hello, my friend! 
Oh, it's so good to see you. Perez? Did they let you go? A prophet, a prophet from Judah came to the slave market and created a riot there. Prophet from Judah? What did he do? He said that the children of Israel are not to be enslaved. Huh. Thank God that there's someone talking for us. Yes, it was the Lord who freed us. We walked home. Hmm. The taxes and the interests. The rich are exploiting us. We can't go on feeding them like this. Huh? Is that? Is that? What is it? It's him! The prophet! The prophet who freed you? Yes! Let's go to him! Master! Master! Who are you? I was in the slave market today morning and you freed me. It's your right to be free. God has liberated you. But I'm afraid now. What if the soldiers come searching for us? Fear no more. We have the law of the Lord to rule this country. The king and the rich have taken the law into their hands. No, the Lord is the king of Israel. Then what about Jeroboam? He, he is an imposter who got into power by cheating people. But, but the priest and the elders are on his side. Don't worry, my brother. All of them have joined their hands in exploiting the poor, but their days are numbered. In the meantime, the landlords and other rich men were getting real upset about what was going on. Nobody, nobody's willing to repay the debts these days. They are saying that the interest is too high. <sighs> Even the tenants are refusing to pay the rent. We must use all our force to suppress him. But why is this happening now? I mean, it was all going very well till a few days ago. It's because of that man. Who? That Amos from Tekoa. He claims to be a prophet. Huh? He wants to free all the slaves, ban all worship and topple the government. What? He's pretending to be the leader of the poor and he's teaching that God is on their side. He is jealous because we are living well. <laughs> we can't let him go on like this. We must do something immediately. People were getting upset about what Amos was preaching to people. And one day, Amos was going by a court in Samaria when he stopped by to listen to a hearing. My lord, this man owes me a thousand shekels, but he is refusing to pay now. Your honor, I borrowed only fifty shekels, and when I went to repay him, he started lying. I don't know what to do now. Your Honor, may I speak to you for a moment in private? Hmm, come here. Listen, if you can give a verdict in my favor, then I will give you three hundred shekels. Please, my Honor, give us justice. He is lying. Please, please don't listen to him. Silence! The landlord is right. The accused must pay one thousand shekels immediately. If he doesn't pay, then confiscate his land, sell his wife and children, and auction him at the slave market by tomorrow. No! Please don't! Guards, take him away! No! He is lying! Please help! Stop it! Who is it? You call yourself a judge of Israel? Who are you to question me? You! You accept bribes and punish the poor. You sentence the innocent to slavery. Order! Order the court! This isn't a court. You are robbers and murderers, not the judges. It is God who speaks. I have heard the cries of the poor. No one will escape my judgment. Shut up! If you open your mouth again, then I will shut it down forever! If you don't listen to the cries of the poor, then you will be the ones crying tomorrow. Gods, take him away! And the next day, Amos went to the temple where the priests were offering sacrifices. Oh God Almighty, please accept the sacrifice and shower your blessings upon us. Amen! Amen! Amen. 
Give us wealth and prosperity. Give us... Stop your chanting! Huh? Who are you? Now listen to these words of God. I hate and despise your feasts and festivals. I hate your offerings. But... But God has asked us to offer the sacrifices. Go away with your offerings. Never step into this temple again. How dare you? This is the royal temple. You have set up idols against my command. Take them away from my presence. You endure slavery, encourage corruption, and you worship idols. Amos, watch your mouth. I won't tolerate this arrogance. Let justice roll down like waters. Integrity like an unfailing stream. God says, your wife shall be forced to go to the streets. Your children will fall by the sword. The people of Israel will be sent into exile because of you. You will die in a foreign land. God holds a plumbing line over Israel. No one shall escape. The king, the priests, and all the judges will be banished. Gods, arrest him. The wrath of God is coming down upon you like a roaring flame. Shut up! Where is your God now? <laughs> Take him to the prison. Let justice roll down. But Amos' call for justice fell on deaf ears. He was imprisoned and tortured for telling the God's word to the people. Wow, that's such an amazing story, Father. Those rich people in Israel had become so cruel. Yes, Lucy. They ignored God's commandments and led their lives as they desired. His words are like a lion's roar, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, Matthew. Now shall I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, Father. Where was Amos from? Amos was from a small village called Tekoa. Correct. And what was his profession? He was a shepherd. Very good, Matthew. Now tell me why he was mad at the judges. He was mad because they were taking bribes to punish the innocent. Correct. That's all for today. Now, I want you all to memorize this quote. Can you? Yes, Father. Let justice roll down like waters. Integrity like an unfailing stream. Now repeat with me. Let, Let justice, justice roll down, down like waters, waters. integrity like, like an unfailing stream. stream. Very good everyone. We'll meet tomorrow with a new story. Which story are you going to tell us tomorrow, Father? I'm telling you the story of Hosea. The story of a man who experienced the pain of loving as God did. See you again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father. Hello kids. How are you, Matthew? I'm fine, father. Father, you told us that you'll be telling the story of Elijah today. Yes, Lucy. I will tell you the story of Elijah today. Who was he, father? Elijah was the first prophet of God. Prophet? Yes. A prophet was a spokesman of God, a defender of the covenant. Hmm. Do you remember the story of King Solomon? Yes, Father. You told us a story yesterday. Yes. When Solomon became the king, his wives introduced idol worship in Israel. This was a disaster. Consequently, authority became corrupt. The poor and the weak were treated very cruelly. Worst of them was a king named Ahab and his wife Jezebel. He and most of other people worshipped a god named Baal. It is during this period when prophets appeared and Elijah was the first of such prophets. Elijah's name meant, My God is the Lord. And true to his name, he was a man burning in his faith to the Lord. It all started when God asked Elijah to deliver a message to the king.
<sighs> I hear the cries of innocent people everywhere. Lord, anyone who worships you is being slaughtered. What can I do? What can I do? I've become so old and weak. God, why are you being so silent? Elijah. Huh? God? Elijah, fear not. I am with you. Go to Naboth's vineyard and meet King Ahab there. I will, Lord. I will go and meet him. Please, my king. I have done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong, you say? How about worshipping false gods? No, my lord. I worship only one true god, the god of Israel. Huh? How dare you? Don't you know that Baal is the one true god? Take him away and kill him. And kill everyone who doesn't worship our great god Baal. No, please don't. No! Come here, you fool. Hmm, the vineyard is beautiful. Jezebel's idea worked. <laughs> All we had to do was to accuse Naboth falsely, the owner of this vineyard, and then kill him. And, and now, this whole vineyard is mine. Ha 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 ha. Brilliant. Ahab, you are the curse of Israel. Huh? Who was that? Who are you? My name is Elijah. I have come here to deliver a message from God. What is that? You have done what is displeasing to me. You filled the land with idols and led Israel into sin. You deny justice to the poor. You committed a murder and now you are taking his property as well. I will bring disaster on your family. Your children will be eaten by vultures and dogs will eat your wife, Jezebel. I'm sorry. I have sinned. Please, please pray that the Lord may forgive me. Please. No, you have no forgiveness. You have defiled the land with idols. No rains will fall on this land until I say, let your bell give you the crops. After announcing the judgment of God, Elijah turned and walked away. Elijah knew that if he was found, then he would get killed. So he went into the wilderness and he hid himself near a stream. King Ahab returned to the palace and told his wife Jezebel everything what had happened. I... I don't know what to do. That prophet... his words frighten me. Don't be a fool, dear. You know that it is Baal who sends the rain and gives us good crops. But... There's nothing to worry about. If it's still troubling you, then we will offer special sacrifices to Baal from tomorrow. But that prophet, his words are still haunting me. What was his name? I'll send soldiers to catch that old fool. We will let the people watch as he's been sacrificed to Baal. Ha! I... I don't think we can find him. Nobody knows where he comes and where he goes. Listen to me, dear. I think it's better for us to repent and turn to the God of Israel. Never! There will be no God but Baal. I will find that old man, even if he's hiding under the earth. I will find him and kill him. Ha! Huh. Jezebel sent her soldiers everywhere in search of Elijah, but nobody could find him. In the meantime, just like God told Ahab, a severe drought came over the land. Trees and plants dried up. But God took care of Elijah. He drank water from the stream. And crows brought him bread. Praise and glory to the Lord, who provides me with bread and water. 
the drought became so harsh that the crops died up and the cattle began to die too. Jezebel thought Baal would be pleased by human sacrifices and send rain, so she started sacrificing the Israelites one by one. Mother, help me! No! Go away! Ha! Mother, help me! My Lord, how long? Poor people are starving to death. The blood of your faithful servants is flooding Baal's altar. Why are you silent, my Lord? Elijah. Huh? Yes, my Lord. You must go to Sarapta in Sidon. There, a widow will give you food. The stream is going to dry up. Yes, my lord, I will. Heeding God's words, Elijah left the forest and left for Sarabda. He walked for many days without food and water. And finally, he arrived at the village of Sarabda. Is this the village of Sarabda? Yes. Who are you? You look tired. I have been walking for many days. Can you... Can you please give me a morsel of bread and some water to drink, please? Mm. I... All we have is flour left for just one bread and little oil. I... I was going to bake it and eat it with my son before we die. Don't worry. Go home and make food for you and your son. But first, Make a small loaf of bread for me and bring it to me. The Lord has told me that if you do this, your jar will never go empty and the jug of oil will never go dry. Huh? I will come back in a while then. So the old woman went home and did as Elijah told her. The jar was refilled with flour and the jug never ran out of oil. Huh? But it's a miracle. God worked a miracle for them and they never ran out of food for many days. The bin of flour was never used up nor did the jug of oil. Elijah lived with them as long as the drought lasted, but one day... No! My son! What happened? Why are you crying? My son... He... He... What happened? Tell me. He... He died today. He was sick for many days. Huh? Hmm. Do not worry. Your son will live. Let me go to him. Lord, my God, hear your servant's prayer. You are the refuge of the poor and the father of the orphans. Let this child live again. The Lord heard Elijah's prayers. The soul of the child came back to him and he was alive again. Huh? What happened? Huh? You are alive? My son! Mother! My son! You are back! Thank you, God! Thank you! Now I know! that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. After three and a half years of drought, God ordered Elijah to return to Israel. King Ahab met him at the city gate. You are the curse of Israel. 
How dare you come back to Israel? <laughs> You're so angry. Didn't your god Baal give you any reins yet? It's all because of you. It's all your tricks. The people are suffering because of you. Hmm. Then listen to me. Gather all the people of Israel on Mount Carmel tomorrow. Huh? You must invite all the priests and prophets of Baal too. What are you going to do? You will see that tomorrow. The people of Israel assembled at Mount Carmel the next day. All the priests and prophets of Baal were there too. There were as many as 850 of them present there. How long are you going to worship two different gods? How long will you keep changing your mind? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal is God, then you follow Him. This is what we are going to do. I am the only prophet left of the Lord and Baal has over 850. Get two bulls and place one on each altar. But do not light the fire. Whoever sends the fire to consume the sacrifice will be the one true God. That's a great idea. Yes, we'll know who is true God today. Ah, what does he think he's doing? He is challenging us. What if we fail? Yes, I'm scared. The king will kill us if we fail. What are you afraid of? Get the bulls. Prove that Baal is your true god. Prophet Elijah looks so confident. Look at the priest of Baal. They are shaking like leaves. <laughs> well, there are about 800 of Baal's priests here. Let them start first. Bring the bulls. Baal's priest prepared the altar. They laid the wood, cut up the bull and laid placed it on the altar. Then they started calling out to Baal, their god. Lord Baal, send down the fire. Fire, 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 God Baal. 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 My god. I hope this works. What happened? Your God is not hearing your prayers? Call louder. Maybe he's sleeping or must have gone out for a walk. Shout louder. <laughs> fire, 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 God Baal. The priests shouted and danced around the altar, yelling to Baal to start the fire. They shouted and shouted from morning to noon with no answer. Why isn't our God sending the fire? Is it? Maybe he isn't the true God at all. Hmm. Let's see if Elijah's God sends the fire. Elijah's altar. Finally, Elijah called the people over to his altar. He began to make his altar. He placed the woods, took some stones and put them around his altar. Then Elijah did something very strange. He asked the people to pour water over his bowl and the wood. Huh? Did he just ask us to pour water over his altar? Yeah. How will the wood burn if we pour water on them? <laughs> he is a fool. If Baal can't help us, then how can his god send the fire? People did as Elijah said. They poured water over the woods and the bull. Everything now was soaked in water. After the entire altar was soaked, Elijah stepped forward and simply prayed. O oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, Show us today that you are the real God of Israel and that all I have done is obeyed you. 
Show your power to these wavering people. Let them see that you are the one true God. Just as Elijah finished his prayer, fire burst out of the altar and everything was covered in flames. Every single thing was burned down to nothing and even the water in the trenches were gone. Huh? The people watched completely amazed and they began to fall on their knees. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is real God. We are sorry, Lord. You are the true God. What? How did that happen? Run! Run for your lives! Catch the priest of Baal. Let no one escape. Kill them! Kill them all. Run away if you want to save yourself. Ahab escaped from there and reached the palace. He explained what took place at Mount Carmel. Jezebel grew furious when she heard that all the priests of Baal had been killed. How could you let that happen? I'm sorry, dear. I couldn't do anything. I? I swear by Baal, whom I worship, that Elijah will be dead by tomorrow. Elijah knew that Jezebel would send men to kill him. He fled into the wilderness. He was tired and took rest under a tree. Lord God, I can do no more. I'm sorry. I'm no better than my forefathers who were killed. Let me die too. Elijah fell asleep under that tree, but sometime late, an angel of God woke him up. Elijah. Huh? Huh? Get up and eat. You still have a long way to go. He was strengthened by the bread and water. He then walked for 40 days and 40 nights to reach Mount Horeb. <sighs> <sighs> This is the mountain of the Lord, the mountain Abraham climbed to sacrifice Isaac, the mountain where God made the covenant with Israel. I need to go up and hide myself there. Elijah climbed up the mountain. And he hid himself inside one of the caves. He stayed there for many days. Suddenly, an earthquake took place. Huh? What's happening? This was followed by a storm and a fire. Ah! 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 This was then followed by a gentle breeze. Elijah then walked to the entrance of the cave. God! What's happening? Elijah, what are you doing here? My Lord, all your prophets have been killed. Only I am left now, and the soldiers are hunting for me too. Elijah, there are still 7,000 people in Israel who haven't bent their knees before Baal. Go back to Israel, anoint Elisha to be your successor. I'm going to execute what I said against Ahab. As commanded by the Lord, Elijah returned to Israel for his revolutionary mission. Hmm. He must be Elisha. Did Ahab die as God had warned? Yes, Ahab went to war against Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. He was mortally wounded in the war and he died later on. And what happened to Jezebel? She died too as God had warned. And because of the sins she had committed, her body was eaten by dogs. Now, shall I start with the questions? Yes, Father. All right. Now tell me what the name Elijah meant. The name Elijah means, my Lord is my God. That's correct, Lucy. Who was the king of Israel during those times? Ahab was the king of Israel 
and his wife was Jezebel. That's right, Matthew. Very good. Now, who can tell me why Elijah had to escape from Israel the first time? Elijah had warned the king about the judgment of God. When Jezebel heard about this, she got really angry and she sent soldiers to kill Elijah. That's right again, Lucy. What did Elijah do to prove that the Lord God was the true God of Israel? Elijah and the priests placed their sacrifices on different altars and waited for the God to send the fire. Elijah said that whichever God sends the fire will be the true God of Israel. Very good, George. And Matthew, you tell me, whose sacrifice was lit by fire sent by God? God consumed Elijah's offering by sending fire from the heaven. That's right again, Matthew. Very good. That's all for today, children. Now I shall see you tomorrow with the next story, the story of Amos. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father. Good evening, children. So, children, I'm going to tell you the story of a farmer who lived a long, long time ago. His name was Mika, which means who is like God, and lived in the village called Morset. Daddy, look. We can make a whole bottle from this bunch. Let me taste one. Hmm, this is really tasty. Don't eat too much, Atalia. It could upset your stomach. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. Let her enjoy the God's blessings. If we get such a good yield from olives and figs also, then we can repay our debts quickly. Don't worry about the debts so much. Our King Jotham is a kind man. Yes, he gave us this land and he even gave enough loan to us. He is as good as his father, King Uziah. Hmm, who knows the way of the Lord? Yes, that's why I told you not to worry about the debts too much. God will provide us. Lord God, we praise you and give you thanks for blessing us with a good harvest. Mika worked day and night on his fields. He hoped to repay his debts to his lenders by this harvest season. That day, after plowing the land, he was returning home. My car! My car! Huh? Oh, Abia, it's so good to see you. My car? I'd like to talk to you about something. Sure, Abia. What is it? Well, what do you think of a marriage between Jonah and Athalia? Jonah likes her very much, you know. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea. Why don't you come with me to my home? And I will talk to my wife about this. Abaya, it's so good to see you. Hello. How is your wife? And how is Jonah? They are all fine. Listen, go and sit inside. We have got something great to tell you. Listen, dear. Abaya has a proposal for our daughter. Huh? Who is the groom? I was asking Atalia for my eldest son, Jonah. Oh, it's wonderful! <laughs> Atalia! Atalia! Come here! Yes, mother. Atalia, we've got some wonderful news for you. What is it, mother? Do you know Abaya's eldest son, Jonah? Of course I do. We used to play with each other when we were kids. Hmm. And now Abaya has got a proposal for you to marry him. Huh. Oh, she's blushing. <laughs> Father, I heard what you were talking. It's a very good proposal, Father. I know Jonah as a friend and he's a good person. Hmm. Now that we all agree, why don't we fix a date for the wedding? Of course. Do you have any dates in mind? How about Friday after next week? Sixth day of the week. The day God created Adam and Eve. That's great. It's fine with me. 
All right, that's fixed then. Abhaya, we'll meet at the fields tomorrow and we'll discuss other details. Of course. Let's meet at the field tomorrow. I leave now. Father, father. <sighs> what is it, son? Our king. <sighs> what happened, son? King Jotham died today. His son Ahaz has become the king of Judah. What? Oh no. King Jotham was a kind man. I wonder how our new king is going to be. He's so young and reckless. Hmm. A king was only 41 years old. May his soul rest in peace. My car, it's getting late for me. I must leave now. We'll meet tomorrow at the fields. Sure, Abia. See you tomorrow. And as they had planned, Jonah and Athalia was about to get married that day. Children, remember to keep the promise you make today. Athalia, daughter of Micah, I promise to marry you according to the law of Moses. What is that sound? It's the sound of drums. It's the king's messenger. Listen everybody. These are the orders of King Ahaz. Syria and Israel have joined forces against Judah. All males between 16 and 35 must enlist in the army within a week. Oh no, my son. And all the money borrowed from the treasury must be returned immediately. Huh? How? But that's impossible. How are we going to pay our debts at such short notice? No. Why should we send our sons to get slaughtered? No. This cannot be real. God help us. Please. Oh my god. Both of my sons are leaving us. Mother, stop crying. We will defeat their army and come back soon. Father, bless us. Take care of your brother and come back alive, my son. We will, father. Don't worry. Mika's both sons left them that day to fight in the war. Mika didn't realize that he was seeing his sons for the last time as they were about to die in that war. My Lord God, please keep my son safe. Stop worrying, my dear. The Lord will protect him. Mm. But what about the debts? How are we going to repay within a week? Well, we'll have to sell the grain and everything we've got, but even that won't be enough. What are we going to do? I'm going to the market tomorrow. I will ask Laban to give me a loan. Only then can we save our land. Don't worry, dear. It's going to be all right. Yes. Lord God will never leave us. The next day, Mika went to the market for selling his goods. But it was a chaos there in the market. Farmers had to sell their products at cheap prices, and the shopkeepers were making profits out of the situation. What? This is cheating. A shekel for 50 liters? Yes, the prices are going down. Did you know? But but that's not even half the price. Listen, if you want to sell, then this is the price. If you don't like it, then you may go elsewhere but please i've had to work so hard to produce this that's none of my concern now move aside let the next person come hello laban mica my friend what brings you here laban i'm here to sell my goods and i also want to borrow some money no problem show me what you have Hmm. I can give you 200 shekels for these. What? 200 shekels? That's not even half the price. Listen, Mika. The prices are going down every minute because of the king's orders. Every farmer is desperate to sell their produce. But but you may check the prices with other shopkeepers here in the market. Nobody will be willing to give you as much as I have offered. All right, I'll take it. I have no other choice. Here is the money. 
while Mika had gone out to sell his goods, the soldiers came to Morshed to collect the taxes. Help! Help! Give us the money or give me your bangles. What? What is happening? Isn't that Mika's house? Yes, it is. What is going on? We have come to collect the taxes. Have you got the money ready? No, but my husband has gone to the market for selling our goods. We will pay back the money as soon as he comes back. No, the deadline was yesterday. You need to pay now or give us your ornaments. How dare you talk to us like that? Go away. I'm not giving you anything. Let my husband come back and then and then we'll pay. Mother, mother, stop it. Uh, uh, leave me. Stop there, you. <laughs> this will be our share. We will come back tomorrow to get the 500 shekels. That's enough. We have got them. You can leave the boy now. Mother, mother, are you all right? No, we lost everything. Oh God, why? <sighs> it's robbery. The farmers had to sell everything for almost nothing. Hmm. Why is it so quiet here? Atalia, nobody home? Father! Father, you are home. Yes, what happened here? Why is it so silent? Oh dear, the king's soldiers were here when you were gone. King's soldiers? They came here to collect the taxes. But when I told them that we will pay tomorrow, they harassed the whole village and took our ornaments. Father, they were a bunch of thugs. They harassed mother and didn't let her go even when she pleaded. What? How dare they? There are laws in this land and even the soldiers must obey them. I'm going to the court tomorrow. I will ask the judge to take action against the soldiers who did this. No, dear. I don't think that's a good idea. They are king's people. Yes, father. The court is filled with soldiers and they won't like it if you go and complain against one of them. No, I will not let this go just like that. Punishment should be given to those who harassed my wife. Mika was shattered by what had happened. He thought he could get justice from the courts. The next day, Mika went to meet the judge. Next, Mika, what's your complaint? Your Honor, when I was not at my house, two soldiers came to my house and... Stop it. This is not the place to bring charges against the soldiers. Give me your complaint in writing and I'll forward it to the concerned authorities. Then why are you sitting here? Aren't you sitting there to hear the complaints? Watch your mouth. I am the judge and I can punish you if you offend me any more. I don't care. If you can't give justice to the poor, then you shouldn't be here. God, kick him out of here and give him a taste of justice. How dare you? Huh. You want to file a complaint against us? Here, here, take this. Ah! Mika got beaten by the soldiers. He was very much disappointed. All his life he had worked hard to live a respectable life and today his wife was harassed. The judge insulted him and he got beaten by the soldiers. He had also lost all of his savings in the market today. But Mika was a man of faith. He decided to start working again to repay his debts and to get his house in order. But one day, when Mika had gone to the nearby town, an army of soldiers came to his fields. The king had given away the village of Moshe to the soldiers for building their houses. But the farmers of Moshe didn't know about this. The soldiers marched in to send the farmers away. Hey, look! There's a huge army coming towards here. Maybe that's our sons coming home. But 
I don't have a good feeling about this. People of Morshet, the army is taking over this village. You must leave this land immediately. You can stay here and be our slaves if you want. What? This is our land. We your slaves? Never. If you resist, then we'll have to use force. We will never let you take our land. We will fight to our death. Yeah, we will never let you step into our fields. Soldiers, attack! The villagers resisted the army and what followed was a brutal massacre. Most of the villagers were killed and their houses were burned down. When Mikha returned, all that was left of his family and his house was ashes. No! Oh God, those 50 soldiers killed my wife, my son, my daughter. What am I going to do? Where is the Holy One of Israel? Where is the God who came down to free us from Egypt? Don't you have the eyes to see the fields soaked in blood of the farmers? Enough. I can't go on anymore. I'm going to join my family. Miko. Huh? Who are you? I am God, whom you challenged. If you are God, then allow me to join my wife and children. I know your pain. You lost your wife and children. They are my children. I watched my children falling by the sword. Their cry pierced my heart. Then, why do you keep quiet? Mika, you won't understand my pain now. Your children are safe with me. Then please, please allow me to join them. Not yet. Your pain will turn into fury and strength. Go and face the commanders, the judges and the king. They rejected me. Make them drink the cup of my wrath. But, but Lord, I'm old and ignorant. Fear not. You will be filled with my spirit. Mika was filled with the spirit of the Lord. Receiving the strength, Mika became a new man and started his mission. Dayton, you coward! You murdered! Huh? You slaughtered my wife and children! You shed the blood of innocent! Who is he? That's Micah, the owner of this place where we built this house. So what? Guards, arrest that lunatic! Get away! Oh! Hmm. But when the guards came to arrest him, they got terrified because Mika was filled with God's spirit. You think you can live in peace in those houses? This mud was soaked in my sweat. This land smells of my children. Why don't you do anything? Uh, I, I am scared. You took over our fields. The hand of the Lord is about to fall upon you. Why did you let him go away after he said so much? It's true. Everything he said was true. Our hands are stained with blood. Mika, burning with the fury of Lord, walked to Jerusalem, the capital. After warning the judges there, he then proceeded to the palace to meet the king. Isn't that Mika? Yes, he is. But he... He looks so different now. Hey, did you hear that he terrorized the commander Dayton this morning? It seems the spirit of the Lord is upon him. All right. I think Mika has become a real prophet. You took over our fields. Ahaz, you corrupted one. How dare you sit on the throne of my servant David? Huh? You flooded the streets of Jerusalem with the blood of innocence. Shut up! This is the royal court. So, you are the high priest? Yes, I am. How dare you slaughter innocent babies in the name of sacrifices? Huh? It was. It was sacrifice to the Lord. You coward! Couldn't you cut your own throat and offer a sacrifice? 
who asked you to offer human sacrifices? Stop it! I am the king in this country. I decide on laws, and there are codes to ensure it. Because of you, Zion will become a claw land, Jerusalem a heap of rubble, and the mountain of temple will turn into a forest. Your Majesty, should we still tolerate this? Your days are numbered. A king will come from Bethlehem. He will rule in peace and justice. Shut up! It is God who made the king over this land. And God will pull you down from your throne. You robbed the poor and crossed the weak. Why is king letting him talk like that? This is what God asks of you. Act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly. Jerusalem will be purified in fire. It will again become the city of peace and justice. Mika challenged everyone in authority, but no one dared to touch him. God was protecting him. And in a few days, the Philistines captured Morsheth and destroyed the city. Thus the words of Micah were fulfilled. Micah went around the towns and villages proclaiming the message of peace and justice. He was a man who was filled with the Spirit of God. So that was the story of Micah. Did you all like it? Yes, Father. Good. Then shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, Father. All right. Then tell me the meaning of the name Micah. The name Micah was derived from the Hebrew word Michael, which means one who is like God. Hmm, that's very good, Lucy. Now tell me where Micah was born. Micah was born in the city of Mors. Very good, Matthew. Now tell me, what was the first tragedy that happened in his life? Micah had to send his sons away for war. As per the orders of King Ahaz, that was the first tragedy. Correct. Now I want you all to repeat this verse from Micah with me. Yes, Father. Act justly. Act justly. Love tenderly. Love tenderly. And walk humbly with your God. And walk humbly with your God. Now let's say that together. Act, Act justly. justly. Love tenderly and walk humbly with your God. That's very good. Now before we leave for the day, let me tell you which story I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Which story is that, Father? Tomorrow I'm going to tell you the story of a prophet who was sent by the Lord to call the whole nation to conversion. A prophet who was made holy by the Holy God. The story of Isaiah. All right, that's all for today. See you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.